Welcome to Prajim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 12 of ADO.NET video series. In this session, we'll learn about caching a data set, check to see if the data set exists in the cache, and then load data from the cache, clearing the cache. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch parts 9, 10, and 11 of this video series. Now within the SQL Server sample database, I've got TBL product inventory table. Now I want to display this data within an ASP.NET web application. So when, when the application runs and when when the application you know loads the web form for the first time, I want to you know load this data from the database. But then once the application loads this data, then I want the application to cache this data so that next time when I come back to the page or when I try to load the data again, data again, instead of coming back to the database, we want to load from the cache itself. So which will obviously improve the performance of the application. Okay, we will talk about cache and how can it improve the performance of the ASP.NET web application in a later session. In this session, we'll see how to cache the data set object in the web application's memory so that we get that disconnected data behavior. If you remember, in the previous sessions of this video series, we have discussed that SQL data adapter and data set objects provides us with a disconnected data access model. So in this session, we'll actually see how to cache this data set object so that it can provide us with that disconnected data access model. Okay, all right, so let's flip to Visual Studio. Let's drag and drop a button control. Okay. I'm going to have two button controls, so let me copy that and paste another button control there. And then I also want a label control, so let's drag and drop a label control. And then I also want a grid view control, so let's drag and drop that. Okay, so to make this look better, auto format that, choose one of the existing uh, uh, schemes. Let's select this. Click OK. All right. So let's give some meaningful names to these buttons and labels and grid view control. So I'm I'm going to call this button as uh, BTN load data. So we will use this button to load load data, and let's call the text as load data. And the second button, we'll call it as button clear cache, and let's you know, give the text as clear cache. In a bit, you'll understand, you know, the purpose of these buttons and what they actually do. Okay, so first let's design the form. And then I'm going to get rid of this text property of the label control because initially I don't want to show anything within the label control. And then I'm going to call this label as LBL message. I'm using this label for displaying a message, so I'm giving it a meaningful name. All right, and let's call this grid view control as GV products because this grid view is going to display some products information. All right, so we have given the meaningful names to our controls on the web form. Now let's say I want to load the data, so let's double click this load button which generates the event handler. Okay, so what we want to do is when I click the button, I want to load this data from the database the first time. Okay, so let's write some ADO.NET code to load data. And within web.config file, I have the connection string to the sample database. So, let, so let's read that connection string from web.config file. And to do that, we use the configuration manager class, which is present in system.configuration namespace, which we have already imported. So configuration manager dot connection strings of we need to specify the database connection string, which in our case is dbcs is the name of the connection string. And then dot connection string property will give us the connection string from the web.config file. So let's give this connection string a variable string cs is equal to connection string from web.config file. All right, so let's create the SQL connection object, SQL connection con is equal to new SQL connection. The SQL connection object expects a string, a connection string parameter, so let's pass that. And then let's wrap this connection object inside and using block so that the connection object is automatically closed for us when the scope of it is lost. We don't have to explicitly call the close method on the connection in case if we use the using clause. All right, so let's use SQL data adapter object. 
So SQL data adapter DA is equal to new SQL data adapter and it expects two parameters the SQL command object I mean the the command text and the connection object that this adapter is going to use to execute this command and the command that we want to execute is basically this select query so let me copy that paste it there and the connection upon which we want to execute that is the connection object we have spoken about all this data adapter object you know the SQL connection object reading a web uh, you know connection string from web.config file in the previous sessions of this adio.net video series so if you have not watched them I would strongly encourage you to do so before continuing with the session all right, so we have the data adapter object. Let's create the data set object. So data set ds is equal to new data set. And then we call the fill method of the data adapter, which will automatically open the connection, execute this command, retrieve the results, and fill that result into this data set and closes the connection automatically. So fill the data set and GV products is the grid view control so let's set the data source property of the grid view control to the data set and finally call the data bind method okay this is regular adio.net code which we have seen you know when we were working with the data adapter and data set objects so obviously now when we run the application and click the button load data it's going to load this data from the database but then in this session we are we are going to see how to cache this data set so so first time when I load this web form and then when I click the button it's going to go to the database retrieve the data set and it's binding the data set to the grid view control which is fine but then what I want to basically do here is um, you know cache this data set and to cache this data set you use the cache object so how do we do that so CACHE that's the cache object okay we will talk about in detail you know about the cache object in a later video session but now we'll just understand you know you can assign a key to this cache object and then whatever you store in that key you can then later retrieve that using the same key so I'm using a key called data and then to that key I am assigning this data set so basically what we are doing after we retrieve the you know after we retrieve the data into the data set we are caching that you know using the cache object and the key for the data set is data okay so we are cached now so basically whenever i click this button what i want to check first is okay is there this data set in this cache how do we check check that if cache of data is equal to null okay now if cache of data is null that means that you know we haven't stored anything in the cache yet it means you're coming to this uh, page for the first time and, and this is the first time you're clicking this button to load the data so at that point the cache of data will be null you will not have your data set within the cache so it loads the data from the database and then it puts that into the cache so next time when you click the button again the data set is cached and so if if it is not null then it's going to come to the else block so let's have the else block so within the else block what I have to do if the data set is already present in the cache then it will come here so what I want to do is copy these lines here okay now this data set object will not be available here but then we know that within the cache object we have this data set so I'm going to retrieve that from the cache using the same key cache of data okay and if you look at this cache object you know if you look at the uh, IntelliSense what is this cache object returning you back it's returning an object back okay so we need to type cast that to data set because we know that data set is present in this particular cache key okay so that's it so this is how you cache the data set and this is how you retrieve using the same key and then we are saying okay if it is null which means the user is clicking this button for the first time then go to the database load the data and then set that as the data source for the grid view control call data bind but then before that also put the data set into the cache object okay so next time when the user clicks the button what's gonna happen there is this data set going to be in that cache of data 
so that's why this will not be null in which case it will come to the come to the else part and then retrieve that data set from the cache type cast that to data set object and set that as the data source for the grid view control. Now what we want to do is we want to print out a message here. So if we are loading the data from the database, then print out the message saying that data loaded from the database. On the other hand, if you come to the else part, we know that data is loaded from the cache object and not from the database okay so now let's give it a quick run and see if it's working as expected okay so the first time you know we are coming onto this web form for the first time so when I click this load data button obviously this cache of data will be null so it comes into this block and then retrieves the data from the database look at the message data loaded from the database now if I click the load data button again since this cache of data will not be null it will come to the else part and you will have this message data loaded from the cache which makes more sense okay now let's see how to actually clear the cache okay all you have to do to clear the cache first of all let's go to the you know web form when I click this double click the button to generate the event handler so when we click this clear cache button what should happen we should remove that data set from the cache object okay so let's see how to do that if cache of what is that the key is the data now this cache object is global meaning you can access that in any web page within an application okay um, you know even if you have cached it in web form 1.aspx and if you are on web form 2 or web form 3 and you want to access that on that page you can do that okay the cache object is global it means it's available uh, you know across entire of your application so if cache of data is not equal to null only then I want to remove that from the cache so how do I remove that from the cache? The cache object exposes a method called remove and to that method you can pass in the key. The name of the key is data. So obviously that key will now be removed from the cache. Okay, so if we successfully remove the object, the data set from the cache, then I want to you know, print a message saying that the data set is removed from the cache. So the data set is removed from the cache okay on the other hand if it's already null you know you can also set uh, an expiry time for the cache object which we will talk about in a later session you know for some reason um, if the cache object cache of data is already null then we know that we don't have the data set in the cache to be cleared so we want to print that message to the user let him letting him know that there's nothing in the cache to be removed so we can print that okay message label message dot text is equal to there is nothing in the cache to be removed okay so now let's go ahead and run this application so now when we click it for the first time it should load the data from the database and that's what is the message we get data loaded from the database and now if I click it again it loads it from the cache now I can clear cache by clicking this button okay the data set is removed from the cache so there's nothing in the cache and if I click this button once again look at what's gonna happen there's nothing in the cache to be removed because the key cache of data is already null so obviously it comes to the else part and then prints this message there's nothing in the cache to be removed okay so now let's load the data again so data loaded from the database I click that once again data loaded from the cache okay now you know that when we click this button for the first time it goes to the database retrieves the data and then puts that in the data set and the data set is cached in the web servers memory since the application is running on my laptop here the data set will, will actually be cached in the memory of my laptop okay now let us say the database is present on a another, on another SQL Server machine I can actually disconnect from the database at this point and then still continue to work with the application in fact let me show you that okay let's actually stop the SQL Server service and to do that 
le uh, click on start run and type in services.msc click OK and upon clicking that you will get to the services window within the services window stop the SQL service and if you have both SQL Express and the full version of Microsoft SQL Server installed then you will have two SQL Server services one for SQL Express and the other one for the full version of the Microsoft SQL Server um, depending on whichever version your application is using stop that service in in on my laptop it's using the full version of SQL Server so I'm gonna stop that so now once the service stops it's like on this machine you don't have SQL Server anymore but then if you look at the .NET application we know that we have this data set available in the cache of my web server memory so when I click this button load data you know the application still loads data because the data is available in cache you know I can continue to work with the application I don't have to have you know a, a re, uh, a connection to the actual SQL Server database because I cache this data set I can continue to change the data you know and then put that back in the cache and then when I get back on the you know network then I can sync up the changes that are present in my data set to the actual table in the database if I want to okay actually we'll talk about that scenario when we like when we actually discuss about the grid view control because we need you know some way of editing the data within a data set and the best way is possibly to use a grid view control okay and then when we talk about grid view we will actually see how to update the data from the data set and then sync up with the uh, database but then at this point what we need to understand is that this data set object when it when it is stored in the cache object it gives you that disconnected data access model you don't really need to have access to SQL Server database now let's say I clear the cache okay so the data set is now removed from the cache now if I click load data obviously we know that the application tries to connect to the database but if you look at the service SQL Server service is stopped on my machine okay so since it is stopped now and there is no data set in the cache it tries to load the data from the database and obviously it cannot connect at some point it's going to throw you know a network service because it's not able to communicate to the SQL Server to fetch the data okay so at some point we'll get an exception saying that um, you know it's not able to retrieve the data because why the if the data is not present in the cache we are asking it to go to the SQL Server to get to load the data okay so obviously when it's trying to fill the data set that's when it tries to open the connection to the SQL Server look at that we have got a network related or instance specific error okay and this error occurred when it's trying to connect to that SQL Server on the other hand if I just start the service up it means now the SQL Server is running and when I click the load data button it should actually load the data back so let's click the load data button and it but we have to wait for the service to start so let's wait for a minute so once that service starts up we have the SQL Server running I click the button look, look at that data loaded from the database okay so this proves that this data set actually gives us this disconnected data access model alright on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day